All right, hey, welcome to April 8th. This is going to be lecture two. Lecture one was the video that I hope you watched uh, from uh, Ad Admiral McRaven. Uh, the, if you want to change the world, you got to start by making your bed. Such a great video, and I hope that you watched it and that you enjoyed it um, and that it was an encouragement to you. A couple things. Uh, one, during this pandemic crisis, I find myself realizing how big of a deal routines are disciplines practices the, the very concept of getting up and making your bed the discipline of choosing gratitude over despair choosing to encourage rather than to shame people it's it's a practice it's a set of disciplines formative practices that remind us who we are the very very active for me getting up at an early hour showering shaving getting dressed in normal attire um even to the point of cutting my own hair the other day was just a big deal. It's this idea of, of the doing the little things that, that help us to, to navigate life. Life isn't meant to be lived sort of willy-nilly where we just kind of move from thing to thing. Like, like rhythms and routines and practices and, and, and disciplines. These are a big deal in our lives because, because there's an intentionality that's involved in, in what we do. And so what I wanted to start off with is by showing you that video and showing how simple just key disciplines can be in our lives in the, in the shaping of our minds in, in positive manners i want to go back to the lecture set now i want to i want to continue talking about this idea of of, of formation spiritual formation in, in this regard and this idea of why spiritual formation is such an important part because we talked about how much of our lives has been in some respect uh shaped and misformed by the brokenness of our stories or the things that have happened to us, the things that have done, the things that, that in some respects have brought shame, guilt, insecurity, uh, those those trust issues, the, the disconnectedness, the kinds of things that we discussed in our lax lecture set. And we also talked about how formation is, is an intentional process of evaluating who and where we are. And I'm going to say even beyond just simply self-evaluation, it's also the institution of, of practices disciplines that form and shape us in meaningful ways it's living life more intentionally and less willy-nilly or ad hoc from moment to moment thing to thing um, without any sense of, of of coherence within our stories right and i believe that the, the most meaningful stories have have meaningful practice when i was in the military i i think that was a perfect example of that the military is shaped by a set of formative practices the time you get up where you go when you get up, the way you stand when you're in front of certain people. When you stand in front of non-commissioned officers, it's different than when you stand in front of officers. Uh, the way in which you speak, the regular rhythms of the practices that, that you participate in, all of that is formative so that the way our lives are lived is in accordance with the disciplines and the practices that formed us. I think you're going to find that, that the most significant and effective and, and successful people have rhythms of discipline and practice and are formative practices that shape and form people intentionally to live certain ways. And, and that's what I'm trying to encourage you in this particular lecture is how vitally important those practices and disciplines are in the formation of our lives. And I want you to think about what are the regular practices that you do, the regular disciplines that are a part of your life that you just feel different when you're out of sync or out of rhythm. For those of you who are avid working out, I would say there's probably a discipline that's involved in that. And if you miss those workouts for three, four, or five days, you start feeling different. Um, for me, journaling is one of those disciplines. It's a, it's a moment of reflection. I talked about that in previous lectures. And, and journaling, if I miss journaling for three or four days, I can feel it because I've not paused, I've not stepped back to evaluate who I am, where I am, what I'm going through, and how I'm handling the situations that I'm currently dealing with. And I think that is important for us to recognize is that within our lives, there probably are certain disciplines and practices that we value. So I want you to think about in terms of your story, the story that forms and shapes you, and I want you to think about the practices that are consistent with the the stories that form and shape you. And especially as we lean into the stories that hold water, the stories that hold weight, what are the practices that I need to to institute in my life that are going to form me in more intentional ways. So in this in this in this lecture set, I want you to go beyond the, the definition of formation where it says um, where, where there's there's a three blanks and, and those blanks are going to be rhythms, routines, 
and return. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So I believe that life has been created to be rhythmic, right? So if you think about even the way in which the Hebrew scriptures talk, um, our lives move best according to rhythms. On six, off one. On six, off one. On six, off one. And then when you think about even the rhythms of the certain feasts and fasts that were part of the Jewish tradition, the sense that that we, we work, we feast, we fast, we work, we feast, we fast, we work, we feast, we fast. And there's this sense that in that, that rhythm of, of our lives, that our lives are being formed to cohere to a meaningful story. And that we're not just willy-nilly about it. This is, this is for me one of the most significant parts about the rhythms of even like the Christian calendar. So when I first became a Christian, I, I realized that that I needed these practices and disciplines that are a part of my life. Uh, there's some substantial practices and disciplines that I'm going to talk about even as I get into the last lecture about prayer that have been formative for my life. But I knew that I needed a way of keeping time, making time matter in my life, that I could move through the calendar in a meaningful way. And the church calendar offered me that. So I find myself anticipating Advent as I start moving towards December because I know that I'm about to enter into a six-month journey through the story of Jesus from Advent to Epiphany, from Epiphany to, to Ash Wednesday, from Ash Wednesday in through Lent, in, from Lent into Holy Week, from Holy Week towards the Pentecost and Pentecost Sunday. And, and there is a formative nature to those rhythms of knowing that I'm going to celebrate, I'm going to fast, I'm going to... I'm going to mourn, I'm going to lament, I'm going to repent, I'm going to celebrate. And there's this sense of expectation and anticipation that my life is being consistently formed by a story bigger than my own. Story formation happens as our lives are woven into a web of intentionality, developed, time-marked, rhythmic, participatory moves. These rhythms become anticipated. It's what I mean. I started expecting or anticipating these rhythms in my life. Many of these rhythms become the ways of, of reaching into the past, pulling them into the present for the sake of the future. We think about even the rhythms of, say, for instance, um, when we gather to take communion. We're reaching back into the past to Jesus' uh, command at the table, pulling that into the present, saying that it's meaningful again so that I can lean more meaningful into the future. That those rhythms, those participatory rhythms that we take, um, and, and if you want to think about this, I, I want to challenge you here. It's not just Christianity that does this. If, you're, if your formative story is consumerism, you've got rhythms there too. Because you can move from consumer holiday, from sales to, to, to Black Friday, to all of those, those rhythms that keep you living shaped by your consumerism. If you're American, if, you, if your primary story is as a good red-blooded American, then you have rhythms that shape how you move from thing to thing and place to place and moment to moment in your life. And I think that's really important for us. Uh, to keep in mind, rhythms reiterate values. And so there's a value in, in the rhythms of the Christian calendar. There's values that we celebrate in the, the rhythms of, of Americana, right? There's, there's, there's values embedded in that. Rhythms are either legislated, sanctioned, required, or taken up as resistance um, because we internally understand their power. Like uh, in, in terms of uh, they're either forced upon us like like uh, federal holidays are part of the rhythm of, of living, and those are legislated, um, sanctioned and required by the church, you know, these rhythms that we participate in, uh, because we recognize the power and how much, how formative they are in our lives. These can be events, seasons, feasts, and fasts, and these are often communal in nature because we're shaped collectively by them. The next thing is I would say that within those rhythms, there's certain routines or practices, disciplines, and that within the Christian church, there's a number of different uh, uh, spiritual disciplines. And you can talk about prayer, reading scripture. You can talk about gathering for worship, the sacraments. You can talk about spiritual direction and, and sacred companionship. You can talk about solitude and silence. You can talk about um, the way in which we give, chari give to charity and offer generosity. You can, you can talk about a number of different elements and opportunities that we have to sort of practice ourselves into being. A lot of times we, set, we, think, we think ourselves into being. I say that we tend to practice ourselves into being. That because, now think about this. A runner doesn't wake up every morning excited to go run, right? Uh, if they just relied on what they were feeling or thinking, they probably would stay in bed. But they know 
they have to, if they're going to be a runner, get up and go run. They're practicing themselves into a, into a certain form of being. I can't just think myself. Now, I, I ran a half marathon back in 2011. I know that's probably hard to believe, but I actually did. I ran the full 13.1. feel pretty good about that. Um, and somebody said, how does it feel to know you're a runner? And I, and I laughed and I said to them, no, I ran 13.1 miles. I spent six months training for this and I ran the half marathon, lost 50 pounds. I said, but I don't know that I can say I'm a runner yet because I don't know that I've practiced myself enough into the discipline of considering myself a runner because runners practice themselves consistently into being. And I ultimately ended up falling off and, and not running and not keeping that up. And so I didn't continue to practice myself into being. So, so we institute a set of practices, we institute a set of disciplines and routines that can continue to shape and form us in meaningful ways. And so these routines are what, that what we build our, our longevity and our goodness and our disciplines on. Practices are associated with actions consistent with our formation around our stories that have goods internal to themselves. We don't practice so that we can show off to others. We practice because there's a good in themselves. Disciplines, these are the practices that one regularly engages in, trusting that participation in these practices in a regular disciplined way forms one to be more faithful to the story that we inhabit. And we hope that at some level, the disciplines of our lives become what's called habitus. Um, this refers to a physical embodiment of cultural capital. It's deeply ingrained habit, skills, and dispositions that we possess due to our life experiences. Um, and there's a whole exp explanation um, uh, that of when something becomes a habitus. A habitus becomes something when it becomes a part of you without even necessarily thinking about it. It just becomes the rote set of practices and disciplines that, that, that our lives are shaped and formed by as we move into and through uh, what we're called into being to do. And so, so I do want to encourage you to think about that. I want you to think about in terms of your Christian faith, at what level does it become habitus for us? It's probably not after, th so people say, I, you know, I started reading my Bible, I never got past two weeks, and, and it just wasn't a practice of work for me. I want to say that we're not practicing ourselves into being until after about 90 days of consistency. And, and I would say that it becomes a habitus much later than that. But it's when, it's when the habit that we engage in has a sense of internal reward attached to it, and we find ourselves compelled to, to chase after that thing that we, that, we're, that we feel gratified by. So, so that sense of going back to the video, and that's where we'll end. Going back to the video, he says, um, uh, if you want to change the world, make your bed. Because you'll know you did something right off the bat. It becomes a habitus for you. Make your bed. It's done, and, and you've known you, you've, you know you've, you've uh, accomplished the first task for the day. And then he says, even if you had a terrible day, you get to come back to a main bed. And there's this sense that in, in that, that, that there's a habitus that begins to be developed in which you just start doing it because that's the nature of who you are. Story formation takes seriously the practices, disciplines, routines that shape us and form us. And then I would also say that stories often have practices of return that when I get away, when I move through story drift, when I move away, we call this repentance in the church. But I think all stories have a way of inviting you back in, into participation um, in meaningful ways. And so I wanna encourage you to think through the rhythms, routines, and the return uh, of the stories that shape and form you in meaningful ways so that you can live more fully into who you've been created to be.